pH, right? Well, I gotta admit, there is very few uh, concepts that are more unnecessarily confusing than this concept of pH. Uh, hopefully you viewed the introduction to acid-base chemistry. And uh, we talked about like the strengths of acids, whether it's strong or weak, what's an acid, what's a base, stuff like that. And we've kind of talked in general terms about uh, acidic solutions and the fact that they have more hydronium ion than hydroxide ion. The opposite is true for basic solutions. Well, it turns out some chemists sometime just decided to come up with this really crazy way to express the acidity of solutions. Um, and that is pH. So you probably heard about this and you probably uh, know that the pH scale runs right about from zero to 14. And it's this oddball thing where like zero to seven is actually acidic. And I'll write all this on the board in just a second. Um, seven is neutral, seven to 14 is basic. For some reason, our brains are all set up to like imagine that um, as something gets stronger, right? The numbers should get bigger. And so uh, this pH scale where, you know, something gets more acidic and then the number goes down really screws up people. Um, so anyway, let's talk about exactly what pH is. It turns out that pH, for whatever crazy reason, is actually telling you there's a mathematical operation. And that P actually stands for the negative logarithm, right? And we'll kind of go through a couple of logarithms so you feel a little bit better about them. Um, I can't imagine being a math teacher teaching logarithms. Um, it's a real pain in the tuchus, but I'll kind of show you um, what you need to know so that you can kind of understand pH. And uh, maybe if you can't do necessarily every single calculation without a calculator, um, it, it'll still kind of make sense to you. Um, so it turns out that that minus the logarithm involves a concentration in molarity. And the concentration in molarity that we care about is H plus, which kind of makes sense because we, we know that H plus is that kind of acidic thing that gets transferred to water. Um, and so there's actually another form for this pH concentration formula that looks like this. And this is read as the negative logarithm of the hydronium ion concentration, right? This is the thing that's uh, present in a whole bunch of, a, uh, or a really concentrated uh, manner in any kind of acidic solution. And then in basic solution, it kind of like goes down and down and down and down. But it turns out that these are both equivalent. If you see this, I really mean this. Right, because just about everything we're talking about is an H2O solution, and every time that a hint of H2O comes in contact with an H plus, that's what forms, right? And we kind of saw that with strong acids. So what the heck does this mean? Well, it turns out that we're gonna have to talk a little bit about logarithms to really uh, understand what the heck is going on right here. And so let's do that. So here's just an example that I kind of picked out of a hat here. What does it really mean to say that a pH of a solution is four, right? So first of all, you should know that it, since it's less than seven, that is uh, talking about an acidic solution. Well, it turns out in an acidic solution, what is true is that the amount, the concentration of H3O plus is much greater than the concentration of OH minus. That's really what it means. And this is actually gonna be a quantitative way of telling us how much more um, acidic is that solution than say neutral or something like that. Well, if you just kind of take a look at this, uh, this definition of pH equaling four, right? So we've got a pH is equal to the minus log of some, so some sort of H3O plus concentration, right? And we could solve this algebraically, but let's not do that. Let's just kind of think about what, um, what must be true here. Well, it turns out that I could just plug in a pH of four here. And that is obviously gonna tell me something about this H3O plus concentration. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda define a log, and I'm gonna do kind of a little bit of algebra, but it won't, uh, algebra, but it won't be anything uh, too major. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide both sides by a negative, right? By doing that, I essentially move the, the negative sign over. So that's okay to do, right? 
Okay, well, it doesn't look much easier. So what the heck is going on here? Well, what this logarithm is really telling you, I'm gonna erase all this and kind of go up ones and really be explicit about what a logarithm actually means. Okay, so all I've done is I've rewritten it and what I showed is what's called the base of the logarithm. Each one of these logarithms has some sort of base. Uh, I don't know how much math all of you have had, but in, uh, in written in this form, the 10 is assumed, believe it or not. I didn't make the rules, I don't know why, but it is, right? So these are base 10 logarithms. And what a logarithm is actually, the question that it's kind of answering is what number do I have to take 10 to the power of to equal whatever is in these parentheses right here? Right? And that's the way every logarithm is. So I'm gonna use a red marker here and I'm gonna show this a little bit more explicitly and I'll even use an X, right? So that logarithm right here is saying, well, what is that X, right? What? So we know that X is negative four here, right? But that is telling us that that 10 to the negative fourth must be equal to the H3O plus concentration. So let's, let's rewrite that. So that's telling me that whatever this H3O plus concentration must be equal to 10 to the negative fourth, okay? So if that number was, let's say, negative three, that would mean it's 10 to the negative three. If that number was, I don't know, <laughs> negative six, it would mean that was 10 to the negative six as the concentration of, um, of H3O plus. All it is, is a concentration and it's in molarity, which is that crazy unit that we kind of talked about in the last set of, of video lectures. But keep in mind that molarity is just a measure of concentration. And it turns out having a concentration of H3O plus that's 10 to the negative fourth, it sounds like a really small number, but it's actually really, really acidic, right? A pH of four is, you know, pretty much in, I guess, the moderate range of acidity. Um, but one of the things you'll notice about any time that we use a, a logarithmic system, every time that number changes, you're actually talking about a 10 times change in a concentration, right? And I'm gonna show you like the pH range in just a second, and we'll talk about different uh, household things that kind of end up um, in different pH ranges. But the important thing to recognize is if you change a pH by one unit, you're talking about a 10 times concentration change, right? Two units is a hundred times concentration change. Three units, a thousand times, right? And so uh, growing up in New York, there was this really beautiful area called uh, the Adirondacks, right? I was from upstate New York and my, uh, a lot of my, grand my grandparents and a lot of my family were all from like New York City. Uh, by the way, we spent a lot of time at Shea, which was a great place to get a hot dog, not to watch a baseball game because most of the seats you couldn't actually see the game. But anyway, <clears throat> so, what was going on there, right, is um, that, that New York City would, you know, constantly be polluting the air of upstate. And so um, you would hear about these pH changes uh, due to that pollution in the Adirondacks, which is this just beautiful part of the world. Um, actually, one, I think the biggest park um, in the United States is actually the Adirondacks, uh, which is a state park. But anyway, I remember, like, People would talk about, oh my God, the pH has changed by like 0.5. And you'd think, oh my God, who cares about 0.5? It's only 0.5. Like, how could that be a big change? Well, it turns out that 0.5 corresponds to a really significant change, right? So if you make water that's, you know, let's say seven times more acidic, if you're a fish, you're not going to be super happy, right? If you're a building, you're going to start to kind of like uh, erode a little bit faster, right? And so my point to you here is that small pH changes actually correspond to a, a really, you know, pretty significant uh, change. Hopefully that last segment convinced you that pH, at least in terms of understanding what it really means, is a it's pretty easy to understand that it is just a measure of concentration, just put in a completely wacky way. So let's kind of bring it back to reality here a little bit and stop talking about so much math. And I just wanted to show you kind of this, this spectrum of pH here. And we're just gonna fill in a couple of things on either side. Also that resource guide that I post uh, may uh, help you out with that too. So what does it mean to say that you're in an acidic solution? Well, what that really means is that 
if you are in, let's say, a, a very, very acidic solution, right, a, a pH around zero, what that means is, is that you have a really, 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 really high concentration of H3O plus, right? That's what it means. It turns out you have a very, very low concentration of hydroxide, right? The more, uh, the more of this you have, the more you're going to be pulled down to this uh, side of the, um, of the spectrum, right? And the less of this you're going to have. So these two are related and we'll calculate a bunch of stuff. Um, but for now, let's just kind of like qualitatively understand what's going on. I'm sorry if my fat head gets in the way here. I'll try to keep my head as far out of this thing as I can. Um, and then the other thing, all right, the basic side is the exact opposite, right? And so uh, we're going to say that over on this side, H3O plus has a low concentration. And over here, the hydroxide concentration is high, right? It's the yin and yang, right? It's, if, if it's the opposite of this is over on the 14 end of the scale here. And then of course, you probably know that like a perfectly neutral solution, at least at 25 degrees Celsius, and yes, it does, it is a little different number um, if you're not at 25 degrees Celsius, but yeah, let's not worry about that. Um, this is neutral. And one of the things I'd really like you to do, and I'll probably put it as like a, 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 as a screen grab right over here, is I want you to look at uh, one of the resource guides and notice what happens at that pH of seven, right? That's that perfect place where the, the concentration of OH minus is perfectly equal to the H3O plus concentration. And it turns out where that happens in terms of molarity, you're gonna see these numbers. You're gonna see that your concentration of H3O plus is equal to that, and your concentration of OH minus is exactly equal to that, right? So neutrality, right, that's a, a neutral solution. It turns out as you work through this pH scale, right, as you go one unit to another, what's happening is this is gonna go up by one, and keep in mind it's, it's a pretty small number, so to show this thing increasing by 10 times, that becomes 10 to the negative sixth, right? That would be one pH unit change. This thing would become 10 to the minus eighth, right? And so in a certain sense, if you think about it, right, these two numbers added together are 14, right? Absolute value is 14, right? And so really what you're talking about in terms of all of these concentrations, the fact is, is that your exponents always have to kind of add up to, to 14. So if this is negative sixth, that's negative eighth. If that's negative fifth, that must be uh, negative ninth. Oh, wow, I almost screwed that up. <laughs> um, um, so, so that's what that means. And then it's the opposite if I go in the basic side, right? That would become 10 to the negative sixth. That would become 10 to the negative eighth, right? And then I am ignoring this, um, what's called the mantissa out front here. We're just kind of talking about the, the exponents because really that's what pH uh, gives us, right? It's uh, pH is a, that logarithmic scale means that every time you move one unit of pH, right? You're actually talking about um, that 10 times uh, scale. And it's the reason we have to list things in logarithms because like looking at that number, if you went up to a biologist, let's face it, right? And said, hey, we got uh, a hydronium ion concentration of this. They'd be like, what does that mean? Well, instead what you do is you say, oh, the pH went down, right? It went from three to two or something like that. Wow, that would be a really acidic uh, solution for something living. Um, so I don't want to take a take a, a, a bath in it or anything. So anyway, that's what that means, right? So take a look at that resource guide, kind of start to understand how that uh, kind of corresponds to, uh, this pH scale kind of corresponds to those different molarities. And now what I'll do is I'll just kind of erase all this other uh, mamba jamba. Oh, I, there's one other thing I have to mention. Um, and then we'll just kind of plug some kind of household substances in here. Um, and the, your lab will also kind of have you uh, look at the pH of a couple of different household things. So hold on just a sec. Let's add just kind of one other thing to this before we talk about uh, the household substances. 
It turns out that anytime you go in this direction, on this number scale, that's more alkaline, right? There's that word again. Uh, you could certainly say that it was more basic, but it's probably more common that you hear people talk about alkalinity, right? More alkaline uh, is gonna be in that direction. And anytime you move in this direction on this number line, well, <laughs> surprise, surprise, this is more acidic, right? And so make sure that if you see that alkaline word, that's what we're talking about. Um, if you're more acidic, you're less alkaline. If you're more alkaline, you're less acidic, right? It's always that kind of uh, yin and yang. So but what are some common uh, things that you might encounter and kind of where do they end up on this pH scale? Well, it's probably important to know that um, straight up distilled water is right around seven here, right? And so let's, and this all I mean by distilled is that all the ions that are usually dissolved in like tap water and stuff like that are removed because they can kind of move the pH a little bit here. Um, Honestly, it's not going to be anything too far away from seven. Um, even the, like it turns out, like if you were to look at, um, you know, kind of like, uh, I guess, blood, right? Different body tissues and stuff like that. You're going to be a pH right around seven, four. You're just a little bit kind of the alkaline side of, uh, of, of neutral here. So uh, things like blood. Um, I help take care of like a community pool um, and it's uh, obviously <laughs> when you swim in a pool, it's pretty important that you keep pretty tight control over your pH. So like we're, we're right around um, this kind of pH and you know, most pools kind of end up around there, kind of depends on what, um, you know, bug killer you use, uh, which is essentially what chlorine and ozone and all that stuff do in pools. Um, but anyway, that's kind of like where, you know, most living things kind of uh, play the game. Um, and uh, as you kind of, uh, you know, look through your house, you might imagine that, you know, uh, bleach is a pretty dangerous substance. Usually it's got the old Mr. Yuck sticker for, I don't know if anybody still uses those things. I still, I used to get into the cabinets all the time and be like, <laughs> and, you know, and now I'm a chemist and look at me. You could end up like this too. Um, but anyway... Bleach is, you know, right around here somewhere. Um, it turns out, essentially, that's what we use at the pool to, um, you know, kill all the bugs, right? We'll, like, bring the pH uh, up a little bit, um, and then we have some, like, really concentrated acid that'll bring it back down to this uh, swimmable level here. Um, so that's just kind of a, uh, an example of that. Uh, other things uh, around, like, we could probably put, like... Uh, like different ammonia cleaners and stuff like that. Um, like the stuff you use to like clean windows usually ends up uh, right around there. Um, it turns out that like if you have like some really dangerous stuff like uh, drain cleaner or something like that, um, there's actually multiple different types of drain cleaners, but most of them are like a really, really super basic solution that literally turns like all the, the gross stuff that's inside of your drain into soap. That's really what like, um, like even if we were in lab, um, I do this really fun <laughs> demo, which is probably not allowed anymore. Um, but like I say like, hey, take some of that base and just kind of like wipe it on your hands. And it feels really slippery, like you have soap in your hands. It's because you are making yourself into soap. Um, so anyway, that's called saponification. Just a, a fun thing you could have done in lab uh, that unfortunately I can't torture, I mean, uh, teach you with. So those are kind of like some really common uh, basic solutions. Uh, every morning I usually start with a coffee. Coffee usually has some uh, substances in it that uh, put it, you know, right around there. Um, the important thing to recognize is that acids and bases are all around us, right? Um, and, you know, in this region, right, like, you wouldn't be su surprised if, like, you know, I, I drank a coffee and I didn't die, right? Well, it turns out, like, pH is around 5 and stuff like that. Yeah, you certainly don't want your blood to be at a pH of 5, but, like, we can kind of exist in an environment um, like that pretty easily. Um, uh, you might have like uh, acid reflux or something like that, right? Where you feel like that raw burning, that horrible burning. Um, those are due to like uh, gastric juices in your stomach. So like your stomach is right around here. 
Um, it turns out uh, one thing that acids are really good at is protonating parts of proteins that then make them really easy to bust apart, which is why uh, we have those gastric juices. Pretty amazing that it doesn't like eat through the sides of the stomach, and that's what an ulcer is. Um, too much A and P, that's icky stuff. Let's get back to chemistry. Um, that uh, one molar HCl, right, that thing, muriatic acid, uh, which again, we use in the pool all the time, um, that's at a pH right around zero. The interesting thing you'll notice is that this is only for one molar HCl. You can actually get HCl up to 12 molar and so it turns out you can actually fall off the end of this chart. You can actually end up with negative pHs. Um, and I used to love to like uh, take uh, like people that taught biology and tell them that. I'd be like, no, it goes from 0 to 14. But then again, I told you already my mom didn't hug me enough. Um, so anyway, this kind of gives you kind of a pretty good idea of, of kind of important pHs, um, as you might see. By the way, uh, also under coffee, we might put soda, right? There's carbonic acid in there. Um, so, or if you call it pop, like some kind of idiot, um, you might put it in there uh, as well.